nervous system. Each second, your brain processes thousands of messages. Just by looking around the room, your brain is receiving information from your eyes, your ears, maybe your smell, and it's putting a picture together. At the same time, it's also keeping your heartbeat at a normal pace, regulating your body temperature, digesting your food, and also keeping track of how many times you might pause this and get distracted by something else around you. Now, your nervous system is an intricate organizational system that processes so much in the world around you and inside your body. It also directs the way in which your body responds to this information. The organs of the nervous system form two systems, which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, and it's the control center of your body. All information about what is happening in the world inside or outside your body is brought to the central nervous system. The brain is located in the skull, and the spinal cord is the thick column of nerve tissue that links the brain to most of the nerves in your peripheral nervous system. Now, your brain contains three main regions that receive and process information, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and interprets input from your senses. It also controls your movement and it carries out complex mental processes such as learning and remembering. The cerebrum is divided into the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere sends impulses to skeletal muscles on the left side of your body. And in contrast, the left half controls the right side of your body. The right half is usually associated with creativity and artistic ability, while the left half is usually associated with mathematical skills and logical thinking. Different parts of the cerebrum are associated with also different senses, such as smell, touch, taste, eyesight, hearing. And then there's other parts that control your movement, your speech, your language, and your abstract thought. The second largest part of the brain is called the cerebellum, and this coordinates the actions of your muscles and keeps you balanced. Now, while the actions of your muscles and their um, contractions are controlled by the cerebrum, your cerebellum is actually responsible for you not falling down every time you take a step. The brain stem lies between the cerebellum and the spinal cord and controls your body's involuntary actions, such as breathing and your heartbeat. Now, when we talked about the, the skeletal system, we know that the vertebral column surrounds and protects your spinal cord. And it is the spinal cord that is the link between your brain and what is called the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is the second division of the nervous system and consists of a nerve network branching out from the central nervous system and it connects to the rest of your body. The peripheral nervous system is involved in both voluntary and involuntary actions. The peripheral nervous system, along with the central nervous system together, carry out three main functions. The first is sensory input or receiving information about an environment. And when they do this, this is called a stimulus. A stimulus might be um, seeing different colors in a rainbow or maybe the smell of something cooking in the kitchen something like that, something that um, kind of you need to process some information. Now, the second function interprets the information from this stimulus in a step called integration. So for example, when you follow the smell of cooking and you when you entered the kitchen, your central nervous system took the sensory input about what was cut on the cutting board, maybe what was on the stove top and what you were smelling, and then your body started remembering this and integrating them with your peripheral system and started planning a response to the stimulus. Then you have the central nervous system orders a response and perhaps it was instructing your muscles to contract in order to pick up the cooking spoon and take a taste of what was cooking on the stone, right? Your peripheral nervous system also took these instructions and carried out these signals through your motor neurons. So while the central nervous system was giving the instructions, your peripheral nervous said, aye, aye, captain, and went ahead and picked everything up and controlled the muscles doing that. Now, perhaps when you went to go taste that hot sauce cooking on the stove, you put the sauce up to your mouth and immediately, ah, ooh, and blew on your lips, ouch, because that sauce was extremely hot. Without even thinking about it, 
once you that hot sauce hits your mouth, your arm jerked away and you automatically ah, start blowing on your mouth and your lips to cool it off. This rapid automatic response is known as a reflex. And this happened because of your nervous system. And this is a way for your nervous system to protect your body. Now, every moment your sense organs are picking up information about your environment. And what they do with this is they change the information into nerve impulses and send the impulses to your brain. Your brain interprets the information and then the senses and the brain work together to enable you to respond to things in your environment. So the sense organs that we know help you see, of course, are your eyes and your eyes respond to stimuluses of light and then they convert these stimuluses into impulses that your brain interprets and it helps you see the object or the person or whatever you're looking at. Now how vision works is that light is either coming from an object or it's reflecting off an object. It enters your eye and is focused by the lens. The light actually produces an upside down image on your retina and then receptors in your retinas and impulses, right? in your brain, or I'm sorry, the retinas will actually send these impulses to your brain in the cerebrum part. And then that cerebrum instructs it and turns the image right side up. And this is what you see. Now, another sense is hearing, which is your ears. And ears work by picking up sound waves caused by vibrations. When sound waves enter the outer ear, they make structures in the middle ear vibrate. And when the vibrations reach the inner ear nerve impulses travel to the cerebrum through the auditory nerve and your brain is able to take that information and turn it into either voices speaking or music playing or maybe it was dogs barking that you heard now the senses of smell and taste actually work very closely together both depend on chemicals in food or in the air and the chemicals trigger responses in your nose and mouth now go ahead and plug your nose then take a drink of something that has flavor or take a bite of something and keep your nose plugged while you chew and swallow. Were you able to taste the food? Well, probably not because the flavor of food is influenced by both smell and taste. And this is because the nose can distinguish at least 50 basic odors while your tongue, there are only five main taste sensations. Those are salty, bitter, sweet, sour, and umami, which is kind of like the taste of meat. Now, remember that your skin, right, is the largest sense organ. And unlike vision and hearing and smell and taste, the sense of touch is not found in just one specific place on your body, but in fact covers the entire area of your skin. Your skin contains different kinds of touch receptors that respond to stimuli. These receptors can respond to a light touch or a heavy touch. They also let you feel textures of objects so you know the difference between rough and smooth. And most importantly, these receptors can respond to temperature and letting you know if something is painful or not. Now, pain sensation is one that your brain has identified as a very unpleasant stimuli. And this is important because it helps alert the body to possible danger. Well, right now, are your senses and brain alerting you now? Let's take a break. Why don't we go ahead and do that? And then when you're done, go ahead and it's time for you to show what you know.